The hot new trend on the right is uh, a little thing uh, I don't have a name for where uh, some snake oil salesman goes on Twitter and starts uh, insulting trans people. And then when people say stuff back to them, they go on the Daily Wire and cry that they've been canceled. And the latest grifter to pull this one is Matt Taibbi. And he's not very good at it. What he did was he wrote an article praising Matt Walsh's and the Daily Wire's uh, anti-trans documentary, What is a Woman? But the problem was is he posted it six times in a row to make sure people saw it. And, of course, he was on the Daily Wire a week later crying that he'd been canceled. Uh, side note. Uh, Matt Taibbi and Matt Walsh are working on a sequel to What is a Woman? It's called What is a Woman Like? It's a documentary, another documentary, where Matt and Matt travel the country interviewing a variety of people who have had sex with women, and they ask them what that's like. <laughs> well, it's, it's clearly a propaganda tactic to try to, try to uh, dismiss uh, any legitimate criticism from within your own tent by essentially saying these people are, are, you know, they're not one of us, they're right-wingers, they're Trumpers, really, in disguise. I find it odd when Matt Taibbi rails constantly about how the government and the corporate-owned media had a right to lie, a First Amendment right to lie about the existence of weapons of mass destruction and the false connection between Saddam, Saddam Hussein and 9-11 and to lie to the American public in an effort to convince them to consent to an illegal invasion of Iraq. I find it very odd that that same person then starts peeing his pants whenever someone even hints that he might be on the right. Uh, I, the, the seminal moment for me came when uh, Rogan endorsed Bernie Sanders, and there were these stringent calls, even from Sanders supporters, uh, for Bernie to reject the endorsement. Remember, he was trying to win the election at this point. He was trying to win the primary, and those calls came from his opponents, because that's politics. Are you new here? MoveOn.org is not in the Bernie camp. Incidentally, these two sit next to each other, Ben Shapiro and Matt Taibbi, is, uh, they make a creepy pair, man. I'm gonna use this for the thumbnail, but I gotta warn you guys, it looks like uh, two dudes just stepped out of the woods asking if they could have your kids. And, and Joe Rogan's one of the most influential media figures in the country. And they said, you you have to, you have to reject that endorsement because Bernie, uh, because Joe once said something about, you know, MMA fighters, maybe who were born male, not, it, it not being a good idea that they fight, uh, natal females. Right. Um, okay. There bumble, bumble door. I think I, I think I know what you're saying. Somebody get this. This dude always sounds like he's swallowing something whenever he talks. Somebody get him a somebody get Matt Taibbi a glass of water. I think he's got something caught in his throat. This dude's got a face for radio and a voice for print. You know. That's crazy. You know, I mean, like Joe Rogan is to the left of probably 80% of this country. And if he's too extreme 80. for you, um, you know, that that's probably an indication that there's something going on in, in your own political uh, bubble that's, that's uh, awry. Um, Hear that, folks? If you think people landed on the moon, then you're the one with the problem. 80%... Joe Rogan is to the left of 80% of the... Is that why he endorsed Ron DeSantis? Or was it because he and Ron DeSantis share the same feeling about gay people who teach? 
Here's the thing about the Bernie Sanders endorsement. That endorsement came less than two years after a study came out, which basically revealed, although it wasn't news to anyone who watches, who even has a mild awareness of Joe Rogan's show, that both Joe Rogan and, at the time, Dave Rubin, were acting as entryways into an alt-right media pipeline. And that would be because of their guest list. Stefan Molyneux, Sargon of Akkad, Ben Shapiro, you know, your typical, the typical you people you used to see on Charlie Rose over on PBS. He was labeled a right winger. And he didn't take it well. It wasn't good for his brand. You could say that he's not that bright, but you know what? He's been in media his whole life because he's never had a real job. Joe Rogan knew how to change the topic of conversation. And he did that by endorsing Bernie Sanders. He had Cornell West on the show. He had Bernie on the show. He mildly endorsed Bernie, but the second... Bernie lost, he got behind Trump. And let's not forget in 2016, he claimed that Donald Trump, between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump was the lesser of two evils. 80%, he's to the left of 80%. Man, I thought I was bad at math. I can't even count Dracula, but I don't know. You know, to, to me, he's no kind of right winger. He, he, he's got opinions that sort of are like the average person, basically, right? And that's that's how he presents himself. And that's why he's successful, I think. That's why his show is a he, he, He's got opinions that sort of are like the average, average person, person, basically, right? And that's that's how he presents himself. And that's why he's successful, I think. That's why his show is successful. He doesn't try to pose as anything other than what he is. Well, he did try to pose as a, as a socialist. For a brief period of time, after years of praising capitalism and railing against Karl Marx. Here's the thing about Matt Taibbi. Well, first of all, average person. The average person? Over 60% of Americans are vaccinated. 80%, over 80% support gay marriage. Way more than half of Americans believe that gay people have a right to teach. Do you think the average American thinks that religious texts have mystical powers that brainwash people into blowing themselves up? Do you really believe that the average American believes that one particular race is superior to another? I don't think so. Here's, a, here's Matt Taibbi's uh, situation. I hear this question all the time, what happened to Matt Taibbi. Here's what happened to Matt Taibbi. Matt Taibbi spent nine years in Russia. He's very familiar with how media works over there, which media figures are allowed to prosper, and which media figures are allowed to be poisoned. And Matt came to America. He smells smoke. He knows where there's smoke, there's fire. When a Supreme Court is out there forcing 10-year-olds to make babies and voting is becoming harder and harder to do, he can see the writing on the wall. We all see it. They're not even trying to hide it anymore. And this man wants a future. He would rather live on his knees than die on his feet. And I'll tell you what, man. I'm not going to judge anybody in that particular situation. Well, maybe a little bit. But I'll tell you what. Because if somebody came along, some Koch brothers came along with a big check and said, Hey, man. Change your tune. You're pretty good. You're funny. You're okay, you know. You're funnier than Steven Crowder. 
Why don't you come and uh, see things our way? I can't say that I'd say no. I'm as cowardly as the next man. But I'll tell you what. If I'm out on Twitter and you see me trying to bait trans people, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna hear me crying about it when people come after me.